Hey cuties and beauties, it's your girl Mina Milan and I am back. So I am going to do my makeup and discuss with you five things I've learned going into 27 on May 16th. Mm -hmm. So continue watching. So for this video, I actually was going to make it silent and just talk over it the entire time. Um, and just do my makeup and just play like really calm music and just because I don't really feel like I have a lot to say like I mean I wish I could like make a poll where you all could like ask me questions and that would be a good time right now to like answer them right now but I don't have any questions so I'm just going in with my uh, MAC um, eyebrow pencil and honestly I'm just kind of doing my eyebrows right now. So this is how I do my eyebrows. And I like my eyebrows thick, like Arabian style, just really giving, very dramatic, but not too dark because my weave is blonde. My skin looks so good right here. As I was editing this, I was like, wow, like my skin is like really nice. If you guys want to know what I use on my skin, make sure that you comment that and I'll just respond to you. Um, because I used to suffer from hyperpigmentation, um, since I live in Arizona, like, I wear sunscreen every day. Yes, black girls need sunscreen, okay? Just because our skin is tinted a little bit more doesn't mean that it protects from the sun. I mean, it's just part of our melanin, like, our skin is still the same texture, so it can still burn and give really weird hyperpigmentation, so I put sunscreen all over my neck and stuff to make my skin all one color. I'm wearing a wig right now by Hair by Honey. And it's literally the best hair I've ever had in my life. I don't wear any other hair besides this hair company. And they're located in Chicago. And they actually dye. It, upon request, you can't have your hair dyed and they'll ship it. And then all you have to do is just get it installed. And it's so good. I've had this hair for literally over eight months now. Not this entire wig, but that like two of the bundles are like eight months old. But I always add new bundles when I'm about to do a wig. But yeah, I think this is the part where I start talking. Yeah, okay, bye. Anyway, I was going to make this a silent video and talk over it while I do my makeup, but because I am trying to switch my car insurance, but it's been a hassle. Like these people literally have, they hang up on me. Then when I call them back, their phone acts like it's out of service like it's just too much with the car insurance stuff but <clears throat> i found a really good quote finally that has the coverage that i want and that has the home insurance bundle for a good price and they end up hanging up on me am i surprised no i'm not surprised with anything that people do to me as i get older like as an adult like is it just me or like I feel like as you get older you just build a bigger tolerance for bullshit like this is not a rant video this is a video just to like discuss my growth since I'm gonna be 27 next month so I wanted to make a video for my followers on YouTube about what I have come to the conclusion of and just my life like I just feel like let's let's go back to us talking about people I am not shocked by anything anymore like nothing shocks me like if people disappoint me I'm just like okay like I believe it like and I'm a lot more I can see the bullshit 
way ahead of time now. Like I used to could not see the signs like when I was younger, like with friends and just people because I used to give people the benefit of the doubt. That's what that is. I used to give people the benefit of the doubt, like, oh, this person wouldn't do this to me, or, but no, like, you cannot look at people as you. You have to look at people for exactly what they are. They're not you. They didn't grow up how you did. They're not the same person, and everybody experiences different things. Maybe they realized before you realized this. So they're like a little bit more, like more advanced than you are when it comes to people. So they just move differently and hurt people hurt people. Like sometimes when I'm working in the office, I'll watch Ayana fix my life videos. I know I'm like really toxic, but like I watch them and it's just like people go through some real stuff. Like, people go through some really bad things in their life and a lot of pain. So, sometimes how people treat you is not really even about the situation that's, that's in front of them. Sometimes people treat you how they're treating you. And this is not because anybody's treating me bad. I'm just bringing this up. Like because of what they sometimes in a situation people react differently because of a past situation that recently happened to them so like again going back to what i was saying they they're more advanced some people have experienced more things so they handle different situations differently and a lot of people are jealous like you i've 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 always been the girl like in school where bitches have kind of like gotten together in groups and picked on me, mainly African American, like it's never been no other race. I know it's, uh, that's toxic to say, but it's like, it's the truth. And it's like, as I was back to Ayana Fix My Life, people of color go through so much. And it's not even that they go through so much like because of their skin complexion. Like they go through so much within our own communities. And it's just like, it's not, it's not their fault, you know? Like, like I, I didn't understand it back then. But you know, I, I kind of grew up in the suburbs and going back to, you know, growing up. And like a lot of girls from like inner cities would like move to the suburbs for like a better life and stuff like that. African American girls. And you know, those people, you know, they experience a I'm I'm from Illinois, so uh, the city would be considered Chicago. I'm from Naperville. So them moving there you know you don't know what they were escaping so then when they see you know people may not be jealous of you because of the clothes you have or jealous of you because you're prettier than them or you know you you have this and that i mean people may just be jealous of you because they look at things like why me like why did i have to experience that in my childhood and I have to walk around with this hurt and this person right here, I can just tell just by how she talks, she, she's never gone through what I've gone through. So I'm just gonna give her a hard time because I'm hurt. And now that I'm 27, I see that now. Just by like, again, like watching I to Fix My Life and all the, not even that show, just like, just having, just having friends and them telling me this, and I'm just like, wow, like, oh my God, like, that's, that's terrible. Like, so when people are just mean or just jealous, I don't even, I, at 27, I don't take a lot, okay, number one, I'm able to spot the bullshit way faster. I already see it coming. 
Number two. Oh my God, this is about to die. I have a charger for that. All right, we're back. So I actually went and bought extra batteries um, cause I'm gonna start getting serious about YouTube, so yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. So number one, I'm able to spot the bullshit way faster now. Number two, I don't take anything personal anymore. Like that situation that any person like, or the, I'm, I'm speaking in like third person or I'll just, I don't know what I'm speaking in actually. That situation that you're going through with that person um, might not have anything to do with you. It might have a lot to do with them. You know, people may be jealous about just how people love you or, or how your parents love you or how, you know, you don't have any kids and they have, you know, kids by multiple different men and how just, just, or just your mindset of where you are in life that you're way more advanced than them. But it's like, you know, for me, I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm not a hater, but I'm like, honestly, well, honestly, very few people really know me, so I can't say ask anybody, but like ask anyone that's encountered me at all. I've never said or done any hater shit to anybody because at the end of the day, I'm blessed. Like I have no reason to hate on anybody. So what I'm getting at is I just feel like I just feel like if someone was around me, you know, if I encountered a, a, a girl or, or a woman that, you know, I inspired a certain thing that she was doing was inspiring me, I would not look at that as. I'm upset that this person is doing this and I'm not. I never, I never, that's my, and you might hear my little dog on the side. I have never felt that way. Like if, if I came across someone like that, I would be taking notes about this person. Like I, I'm very like a, okay, so, you know, what was the name of that? Or, hey, Pop, come here. What was the name of that? Or how did you do that? Or, you know, I would just start asking questions. Like, I'm never the type of person to be upset or intimidated. So, number two, I never take anything personal anymore because I understand that you know, m maybe everybody doesn't have that mindset. There's there's some things about myself in my mindset that I don't have and, and that I'm growing to get. But I'm not gonna be mean to somebody or have some animosity towards somebody because they have something that I don't. It's just their moment. It, it's, it's just their moment. like. That's just how, how I look at things, personally. Like, okay, for example. Okay, Selling Sunset. If you watch Selling Sunset, they're all jealous of Christine, like, honestly, like. But like, why are you jealous of someone? Because they're them. They're a go-getter. They wake up every day and they look their best. Or they, they, they try, not everybody wakes up every day and looks their best, but this person tries to. So like, why aren't you trying? I, I just never understood that. Like, if she's stepping, why aren't you stepping? I mean, th that's just how I look at things. Like, if someone's coming into the office and setting the tone, okay, she's setting the tone. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring it up some levels. Like, that's how I personally look at things. So like, and exactly what Christine's going through, that's literally what used to happen to me in high school and college. Like, girls would get up in groups, not white ones, black ones, and they would literally be like, we don't like you. Like, I'm like, I don't even know you. <laughs> like, I literally do not even know you. Like, 
I, I, I don't even know your name. I really don't. And it's just like, bitches are weird. Like, I've never not liked someone because, I don't know. I, I Honestly, there's no one in this world I really don't like. Like, that's how much I don't care. Like, there, there's no one, like, if you're my friend, you will never hear me say, oh, I don't like her. Like, I, I don't say stuff like that. Because if I don't like her, but I don't even have anybody I don't like. But I can have a couple people that don't like me. That's weird. <laughs> what do you call that? Like, that's weird. Like, why don't you like me? There's nobody in this world that I don't like. I don't even not like the devil. I just feel like he's playing his part. That has nothing to do with me. So back to what I was saying about Sewing Sunset. They just all, I feel like when girls are intimidated, they have to gang in groups to be one, to be considered one, because they're not gonna win one-on-one. -on -one. And that's just, that's just what it is. Like, but anyway, people feel intimidated because of the things that they've gone through in their life. Like, you don't know what people have been through. Like, people have maybe been through like their parents telling them that they're not good enough or they're not pretty or, or they can't do this. Or like watching Ayana fix my life has shown me that there, there's a lot of messed up parents in this world. Like, that punish their kids like brutally. Or, or know about some child abuse that's going on in their family and they literally don't say anything about it. Like, just really hurtful things. And it's like, if you don't know like where Naperville is, like it's like a, there's, there's literally a mosquito in here and that's what I keep staring at. Like, I don't know how it got in here, but I want it to leave. Well, it's about to die. Anyway, like, People go through so much stuff. Like, so, yeah, in conclusion, number two, I don't even take anything personal anymore. Like, you're mad, and it probably has nothing to do with me, and I'm sorry, and I hope you find the healing that you need. And that's just what I'm gonna start saying to people. Because I'm genuinely, I don't do anything to anybody. Like, no one can say in this world, you know, Mina, she has done this to me, and that is why I don't like her. Because I don't care enough to do anything to anybody. I don't need to step on anybody's toes to get anywhere where I need to be. So that is why I do not take anything personal anymore. I feel like that's part of my 27. Number three. I would say I'm a lot more self-motivated. So like when I like growing up, well, yeah, I, I can say this. Like growing up, I used to like look up to people and stuff like that. Like, but now I just want to be like the best version of myself. And I self-motivate myself every day by writing down in my journal the things I want to do. And I no longer look at things as being impossible. That's number three. I no longer look at things as being impossible. That is a good number three. So number one was I can spot the bullshit a mile away now. I see you already. And I'm just gonna distance myself because I don't have time to combat with you. I'm not gonna do that. Why would I match your energy when I can just maintain mine? And my energy is very important to me. Number two, I no longer take things personal because I realize that people of color or just people in general have gone through a lot of stuff in their life. So how you feel towards me, how you're directing this anger, it may not even be about this situation. And number three, um, I just said it, oh my God. What did I say? Oh my God, number three. Stop, Pogs, I can't think. Number three, I'm on the way. 
Oh my God, I straight forgot it. Let me sit and think about it. Who's your grandma? I don't take anything personal. Self-motivated. Um, oh my God, and it was so good. I literally just said it and I forgot. I didn't, I didn't like rehearse this. Like this is, this is like just, I just decided to sit down and just record. Give you some organic. Um, what did I say? Oh my God, okay, so we're gonna come back to that then. Jeez Louise. If you remember it, like put it in the comments please so I can remember it. Oh my God, I'm so pissed. I am so pissed. So right now I'm getting ready for my Market Monday with Mina video where I post, well, let's just say, I'm about to start doing every Monday for sure. Like I've been taking a little bit off because I've been busy, but now I'm about to get back on my Market Monday with Mina. So that's basically on my Instagram, at AZ Real Estate Goddess, if you're new here. And that is where I talk about real estate related topics, and I shout out a restaurant and I shout out my preferred lender that I use that I'm also using um, and just a lot of great stuff that you may need and I feel like it could be really beneficial if you just do at AZ Real Estate Goddess I'm based in Arizona and hit the follow button on that and then you can see me. You can see me on YouTube, and you can see me on Instagram, and then with a few friends, and then you'll be commenting my pics, and I'll be commenting on yours, and we can just, you know, do that. Do that thing. I'm really pissed I forgot what the third one was. Like, what was that? Oh my God, okay, let's just sit in silence and think. So we said one was, I guess about the bullshit a mile away. Two was, I don't take anything personal anymore. And three was, I did say three was I'm self-motivated, more self-motivated. Oh, I remembered it. I no longer look at things as being impossible. Boom, we're back on track, we're back on track. So I no longer look at things as being impossible. And I used to like, I used to look at things as being impossible because like I just didn't feel like I had the means or I just wasn't smart enough or I just don't have the time or you know that's just not my lane so now I no longer look at things as being impossible so where that comes from that basically just comes from age and just seeing myself like accomplish goals that I didn't think that I could and I did and just it's pretty simple it's pretty basic so that's that um, number four we're gonna do five number four I would say I look at people as people now like when I was growing, like, not when I was growing up, because I'm still growing up. Hold on, I'm, I'm finding my lash glue. I'm trying to locate that. Um, where is this? I look at people as people now. I don't look at them as characters of the life of Mina because they're not. They have feelings, they have families, they've experienced things in their life. They also don't have time for the bullshit. They also don't take things personal. And there's other people in this life that matter more than me. And you know, there's other people in this world that matter more than me. So exactly. like. So let's, for, for example, you know, I'll walk into like a party or something and, well, that's not a good example. I'll, I'll be in a situation with someone, right, where it's not going good. And I'll just 
treat them any type of way because I feel like um because I feel like they like people don't owe me anything like you don't have to be here so what I'm trying to say is like I treat them like anything because I feel like they're in the life of Mina as a character, like a TV show. I can't really explain it. I know that sounds weird to like say, but like if you if if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Like these people. Okay. So I used to be in this. Um, I used to be the chairman of this leadership program, right? At my at my college, and you know. A lot of people felt like I was a bitch. I'm just going to say that. And it's just like, because I probably was. But I was just being myself. And if you find me being a bitch, then I really didn't care. Like, because I just didn't care. And, and, and I didn't care to be liked. That, that's what I'm getting at. Like, I just don't care that much. Like, literally, I don't care who doesn't like me. And I don't care... To be liked by people <laughs> like that was my that was my thought process like literally what I just said in number three like yeah I, I can't name anybody I don't like because I I didn't care I don't care if you like me I don't care if you don't so not that I'd walk in with the attitude but when we would do you know our, our, our organizations and things like that I guess my tone was intimidating to these to these people and it's just like you know, as an African-American woman, they're always going to chastise you about your tone and how you carry yourself because at the end of the day, it's not even about your African-American woman. It's even if you're a woman in general. If you're in a leadership position, you always get labeled the bitch. Like, why does it have to be like that? Like, Nicki Minaj literally said something and I'm literally going to put a clip a right here. When a man is assertive, he's a boss. He bossed up. He bossed up. Yeah, he bossed up. No negative connotation behind bossed up but lots of negative connotation behind being a bitch. Donald Trump can say, you're fired. Let Martha Stewart run her company the same way and be the same way. Oh, evil But Donald Trump, he gets to hang out with young and have 50 different wives and just be cool. Oh, Donald, we love you. Donald Trump. But when you're a girl, you have to be like, everything you have to be you have to be dope at what you do but you have to be super sweet and you have to be sexy and you have to be this and you have to be that and you have to be nice and you have to it's like i can't be all those things at once but yeah like that's literally how people feel about you like as as a woman it's not even if you're black or if you're white but if you're a man you know you're a boss you know, oh, okay, don't mess with Brad, you know. Brad, you know, he, he doesn't he doesn't play around. So everybody be on your P's and Q's when Brad gets in the room. But when a woman gets to be in a, a powerful position or a leadership position, um, oh, here she comes. You know, it, it's, it, it, even women do it to other women and it's sad, like, but it, it didn't bother me at the end of the day. I'm sorry, I'm trying to, these are way too long for my video. I do not want to wear really long lashes like that. Yeah, let's wear some shorties. Some shorties are good. These are my business glasses. I mean, my business glasses, my business lashes. Um, yeah. So back to that. So I was like the chairman of this leadership uh, position and it was fun. Like, and, and this stuff really didn't start happening until like toward the end. So anyway, back to my story. So she, uh, my, she was kind of like my boss, but she was like the head of the organization, right? And you know, she elected me, you know, I, I mean, I come in there, you know, with blonde hair, my typical ways. I wasn't any type of way in the interview. So why are you? she just kind of she was just a, she was just a bitch like honestly she was such a bitch to me like to the point where literally like and i'm a big baby like i'm the type of person to cry 
I know that's like, oh my god, black women crying. Like, yes, black women cry, okay? Yes, black women cry. Like, I'm the type of person to cry in my car. Like, especially when I feel attacked. And if you're an African American woman and you've worked around people and you know that feeling, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's and it hurts and it's sad. But anyway, like she would be like, it's you know, it's how you say things. It's it's this and that. And she would try to like tell me how to talk and like be this person. And, and it's just like it made me feel so. I was honestly so stressed like and hurt and it was just so toxic like it was just terrible it was a terrible experience like honestly I wish I could say her name like this lady needs to be like put down like seriously like I'm not even gonna do it but like she was she was like mad weird so one day you know, she had brought me into her office. She's like, love to do that girl. So I'm like, yes. And then she's like, you know, she's telling me, you know, I don't remember the context of the story. But, okay, I'm I'm a Taurus, okay? So I'm when I'm mean, I'm, I'm really mean. And, and I know exactly what button to push to say to you because you're pissing me off. But I also take a lot of shit because I don't want to be that person. I don't want to inflict pain on people because I just don't want to be that person. So I'm in her office or whatever, and she's like, she's telling me stuff like that, and I'm just like, you know, listening. I'm just waiting for my moment, you know? I'm just waiting for my moment. And she's like, okay, well, I have to go pick up my kids. This lady is like 47. <laughs> she doesn't have any kids. She calls her boyfriend her boyfriend's kids her kids and he's younger than her and she like pays all the bills in the house and like she was like bragging about like how his kids are on her health insurance so they're technically her kids like she's like deranged like that th this was before we had this sit down situation but i just kept that little situation noted that she said that because it, it it sounds crazy to me because it's just like, lady, these are not your kids. You're delusional and you've missed your time in life to have children. So now you're claiming this lady's children is yours. You're weird. But, you know, I didn't say that. So she, you know, tell me, I have to pick up my kids. And I was like, but those aren't your kids. Those are your boyfriend's kids, right? That's what I said. And she was like stunned. And I was like, you know what? I feel like you're really miserable in life. And I feel like you're sad. And I feel like that what you're doing right now has nothing to do with me. And I'm gonna leave, cause I know you're bitter and miserable. That's literally what I said. Like, oh my God, I did not care at this point. What else did I say? Oh no, then, then you know I had to hit her with that, that health insurance thing. I was like, I think I said, those aren't your kids. Those are your boyfriend's kids. Just because they're on your health insurance, doesn't mean that they're your kids. If you didn't have them, they're not your kids. You don't have any children. <laughs> you know, a woman that can't have, that's so mean to say. But she was, I have, this was five months of me dealing with this lady. Like I, I just had to, right? She looked at me so stunned, okay? She had like light tears in her eyes. And I walked out. Because this lady has made me cry at my house when I get home on multiple occasions. And I just wanted her to feel exactly for a second how I've been feeling for the last five months. And I regret it, you know? I, I genuinely regret it because just because she's hurting, I, I, wait, hold on. I read on Instagram, don't make ugly people don't make ugly make you ugly. Like just because she, everything I said to her was facts. You know, she's got this little Kmart ring that she probably bought herself. She was just like, a, it looks like that. And the dude is just like a gym teacher. Like literally, <laughs> she used to come 
in there and be like, my man won gym teacher of the year. <laughs> and be like, this bitch is pitiful. <laughs> I used to think these things in my head. Oh my God. So I just couldn't wait. I just couldn't. Because she was such a bitch to me. And it was just like, for what? It was just, it was just like, for what? And I just, I, it's funny now, but I felt bad that weekend. But back to what I was saying, what was number four again? Oh my God. The thing about little lashes is they're so hard to put on because they're small. But I hate when girls are doing like business and they got these big old butterflies on like, Tishla, take those off. Okay? <laughs> like, just wear some normal shorties, boo. Okay? You're looking kind of... You're looking like a street walker. Just wear some normal shorties. See? You like some... Well, I'm gonna fix them. Okay, so what was that? That was number four. So number four was what? I got away. I forgot. Did I ever say it? Oh my God. <laughs> I forgot. Oh my God. What was number four? What did I say? We're just going to say, okay, so how, how it ended. Okay. So the next time that I came back, um, she just was like ignoring me and stuff like that and like, I, it, it, I just was like, I don't care, like, oh, I think, I, I think I'm gonna use number four as, um, how it ended with, with this group, basically, I just tried my best, and I just ended my term, I mean, I just tried my best, it was just, it was like a six month term, I mean, oh, do you know what happened? COVID happened, that's what happened, so we stopped meeting up together, so after a while, um, I just, I just forgot about it. Cause I'm just like, I'm not dealing with these people. These people are rude as fuck. Oh, and then one of the people there, like one of the, um, the officers, you know, chairman officers, you know, one of them was like, one, one girl came up to me and she was like, oh my God, no, don't think I'm a bitch because I told her that. This is why I totally forgot when bad things happen to me in my life. I try to just forget about them. Okay. So one of the girls comes up to me one of the women and she's like you know can i talk to you and she's like okay so one of the male officers was like oh mia's just a bitch because she's black this is what this is this is what that's actually why i was sitting in her office actually and then she was dismissing how i felt about that situation by saying oh i have to go pick up my kids that's why i said that to her i totally forgot how this went so I'm like, really? So you know what I started doing? Because there's been a couple of conversations that I used to have with those people. And um, I would tell her what, you know, how they were treating me. Like, I'm not the bitch. Like, these people are genuinely mean to me. And she was like, not believing me. So as this girl was talking, I started to record her. Because I'm not about to play with you. Like, lady, you're going you're gonna to hear this. So that's what I do. So that's why I'm in her office talking with her. And it's like our office, right? And she just, I'm just inside her, her room. And I'm like, look at what this lady's saying. The first thing she goes to me after she hears this is like, is this legal? I'm like, yes. And actually, first of all, I actually Googled it before I brought it to her attention that I, if you can record someone. And, and you can in the state of Arizona. And yeah, it is. I'm like, uh, yeah, it is. I even screenshotted like the ARS code. Like, lady, I'm not. Anyway, so I was expressing to her my feelings about, you know, how the I'm not a bitch. These people are genuinely fucking racist. And she goes, you know, I, you know, I don't see color. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I never said you did. But are you understanding the context of what's going on here? And you know what? This is a really bad example because those people deserve everything that they got. <laughs> from me <laughs> they did I, they, they really did though like these people were terrible like and let's just move on 
let's just totally let's not even let's not let's move on that was Anyway, long story short, she's dismissing my feelings as they always do with black women in the work world. They always dismiss our feelings that we're talking about. And they make it seem like that we should put up with stuff and then when we go off on people, we're crazy. And it's just like, why? Why do you think this? Like, no, you are making me feel crazy because you're not listening to me the first time. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so let's move on. So number four is Okay, so let me add that into number four. That lady doesn't owe me anything. That's number four. Nobody owes me shit. That lady doesn't owe me to be on my side. She doesn't owe me honesty. She doesn't owe me anything. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't owe me to be on my side with that. And I need to stop expecting people, you know, to be in the world of Mina. Like, because like, they're not. You know, and, and, and what hurt me was the fact that she didn't have my back on that. But going into number four, nobody owes me shit. Nobody. Nobody. And that's fine. That's, and that's totally fine. So that was a situation that was really disturbing to me. And it just allowed me to see that in the work for it, in the work world or in social events, never, never express to people how you feel because they don't care. They don't. Nobody cares how you feel. Nobody. So that's 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 number four. Nobody owes me shit. Number five. Keep people at arm's length. And I'm gonna get into this, okay? So, okay, so there is a situation with, um, I, I'm out here in Arizona, right? A lot of people that I know and that I talk to are back, back home. Let me do my, hold up. And I was, okay. I met this person um, through some services that I was getting, right? And then she reached out to me, I reached back out, and I was like, you know what, let's link, you know? Let's go for, uh, you know, food or whatever. So we go for food, we start talking. She, She's cool, you know what I'm saying? And long story short, we planned some things, those things happen. They actually happened on a really good note and everything was fine. So I decided to help her with her, her, her buying a home process, right? So I'm doing this, right? And Everything's going good, yada, yada, yada. But here's the thing. You have to keep people at arm's length. You, you, you cannot invite people into your life. As it, you know, if, if someone's gonna be your friend, they're gonna be your friend. If someone's gonna be, you know, your client, they're gonna be your client. But even, but, but a friend can be, a, a client can be a friend. Cause that's originally how it started actually. So, but there has to be more of your client than your friend. And there has to be some boundaries there because people like to get comfortable and then people think that they can address you any type of way. And as previously I've said in this video, I don't care to be liked. I really don't need you in my life. But now that I'm getting older, I'm, I realize that you actually need people to like you. And I want to be liked, but when I say I don't care to be liked, I mean to say I'm protecting my energy. Once you do something that I see that is bullshit coming forward, I'm cutting you off, I'm blocking you. My block list has more people on it than my contact list, I'm so serious. And I'm blocking you immediately and I'm cutting you off. 
because I know how people can get and I'll just go into this briefly. So, um, we get, hold on, let me see if this is this insurance people. Who is this? 8820733. Hi, this is Nina. Are you? Yeah, I've been calling you guys back. No, 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 not at all state. No, I think it's State Farm. I already have a quote going. Thank you. No, it's fine. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Um, okay, so back to my story. So, I forgot where I was. Okay, so basically this person... Um, I'm sorry, I had to get dressed out of camera because I had to get on the phone because... The car insurance guy called me back finally and I had to like handle that situation and switch our car insurance over and that took forever. Like adulting is a joke. Um, so long story short, I mean bitches get weird and I saw it from a mile away. That's why she, she really wanted to hang out with me like um like and meet hang out with my man and my man and her man. And I just was like, mm -mm, I need to like see you for a minute because I know that that hate is coming because I'm so scarred in my life about how women all of a sudden just the hate just comes out of nowhere and I'm just always expecting it. So that's what I mean by number five, keeping people at arm's length. Are we on number five? So we said number one was um whatever i'll just go back and watch it but yeah we know what number one was sorry my, my mind got off focus you know what, you know what the number one was we know what number two was we know what number three was number four was was it nobody owes you shit yeah i remember that one and number five was keep people at arm's length so she really wanted to like take it with me and I never invited her over my house because I just was expecting for it to come and it ended up coming. So she, you have to keep people at arm's length I learned because like if a client is going to be your friend, they're going to start talking to you like that. And it's like I'm in work mode, but you're still in friend mode. So I see where this is going. And I'm not going to match your energy. I'm just going to maintain mine and my character and my business and just cut you off. Because I don't like how you're speaking to me. And I feel like this is coming from another place in your life of hate. And in the beginning of me knowing this person, I think we were like sitting somewhere like at a nail salon or something. And like, I was like, oh my God, you should get you should get a French tip white. And I'm bringing this up because like, this is when I first noticed that she was insecure about herself. And I was like, I, if you're my friend, you cannot hang around me if you're insecure. Because I'm a very secure woman. So if you're insecure about anything about yourself, there it goes, did you see it? That's this freaking, I don't know if it's a mosquito or a gnat, I literally don't know, but it's, Um, we cannot hang out. So, I was like, you should get French tip white. And she was like, I'm too dark for white. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I, I, I honestly, I am so pro black women, obviously, that like, that almost, that got me like a little teary eyed because it's like, oh my God, there are women out here that they're, that think that they're too dark for colors. It's not funny, but like it really like 
and she was she was older than me she was like in her 30s and i'm just like oh my god like wow from that day forward i knew i had to watch this person because if you think that about yourself then i know you hate me like and i'm just gonna keep you at arm's length and it's, it's sad, you know what I'm saying, that I have to do that, but that's something that I'm learning about myself and the woman that I'm becoming. Because like, you know, not everybody's gonna like me and, and that's okay, I'm not for everybody to like. And again, was it number two or three? I don't remember. Don't take things personal. This has nothing to do with me. That statement that that person made Someone has, going back to Ayanna Fix My Life, not going back to Ayanna Fix My Life, but like things have happened to people in their lifetime. Someone put that statement in her mind that that's the truth about her being too dark for white. And it's like, oh my God, like I literally wanted to give this person a hug. Like I felt so bad that they actually thought that about themselves. Like, I don't know. I just was raised differently. Like, I remember one time I was at a pool party and I think I was like nine. I was at a pool party and I had got my hair. My mom kept my hair down. Like, I had got a fresh press. No, no, no. I wasn't nine. Yeah, I think I was nine. I had got a fresh press. It was like braided and then like the rest was pressed. And this was like two days I got it done. And then the party came. I'm like, oh. Pool party. I didn't think that, but you know, I'm like, oh my god, my hair. So my mom had got me this like swim cap, and I'm like, mom, I'm not wearing that. Again, I, I'm from Naperville, Illinois, so it's the majority non-black people. So I'm like, mom, I'm not wearing that. So I'm like, whatever, you know, I'll just get in the pool. So, oh my god, this is about to like get me emotional. So I'm like having fun being a kid, and then oh my god, I'm about to like get fucking emotional talking about it. So I, I go back into, um, cause we're at like the country club. It was like somebody in our, it, it was like our pool party, uh, our neighborhood something like something. And then um, I start, you know, my mom starts drying me off or whatever. She starts putting my dry clothes on. I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh my God, my hair. It was like all, you know, I have 4B hair. And I was like, oh my God, like my hair. I hate being black. I said that. Oh my God. And my mom, oh my God, I'm about to be like sad saying that. And like, she literally slapped me. <laughs> she slapped me. Have you ever been slapped by your parent, your mom so fast that like, you're like, you don't even see it happening. You just be like, did you just hit me? <laughs> like, cause it was so quick. So I was like, I just remember my mom slapped me so quick because she was like drying me off and I was like, oh my God, I hate being black. And I was like, cause you know, everybody around me at the pool party was white. So I'm like, you know, I'm the only girl whose hair went from straight to like trunk. And I was like, turn around. And I turned around the mirror and she was like, you are a strong, beautiful, gorgeous, confident black woman child of God, and you are the most prettiest girl here at the pool. Tell yourself that right now. Say it! And I was like, oh my God. And I had like these tears in my eyes and I was like saying it. And I was like, I am strong and I'm confident, I'm black and I'm the prettiest girl at the pool. She had to say it three times. And it's just like, those things like that was how I was raised. And that's why today people are like, oh, she, you know, you're so confident, stuff like that. Like, I, it literally was like, confidence was beaten into me, like, genuinely. Like, I know that's like, it, 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 it literally was slapped into me. Like, I had to be confident. Like, my mom genuinely, like, made me be confident. So, back to what I was saying with that person, and number two, don't take things personal. Like, Maybe in people's life, they didn't have that. You know, someone didn't tell them that they were beautiful. Like, someone didn't say like, you know, you're the most beautiful girl here. Like, you're strong, you're confident. Well, I don't want to throw the whole strong narrative out, but my mom did say strong because they always try to place 
black women were strong and I just don't know why. I mean, all women are strong. Every woman pushes like a human being out of her body. Like all women are strong. Like I don't know why they try to play the whole black women narrative strong. Like all women are strong. It's very weird to me. Anyway, um, oh, that was gross. I think I just, um, I don't know if the camera caught that. Whatever. I'm not editing any of this. So, yeah. So, like, yeah, don't keep people at arm's length because not everybody was made up how I was made up. So, that ingredient, everybody is the same. Everybody is equal, but everybody's got different ingredients in them. So that person may have a different ingredient in them that may not mesh with mine, and that's okay. And that's just what I'm learning growing up. I mean, I'll be 27, May 16th, Taurus season. And um, I'm just learning, developing, and growing. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to post this. I have so many vlogs I have not posted but this one I'm gonna post because I like talking and I'm just gonna post this. I'm gonna stop being scared to post my YouTube stuff because I'm afraid of not being, not, not having quality content. Like I feel like my content is in quality even though I went to Cali, Columbia, I went to Jamaica, I went to freaking, I do everything quality every day, but I just feel like, oh my God, I sneezed on camera. I'm not believing it. Oh my god, I look back from this angle. Oh my god, my double chin is showing from this angle. I'm not gonna edit it. My camera's dying. So I'm gonna end it here. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, if you really like this, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe.